Hello, judges. We are Team Paul United. Next. Our team consists of builder Aiden and program assistant. Our ordinary members, Alex and Kyrie, were not available for the competition. This is the currency of our robot. You'll start off by talking about hardware. For this section, yeah. we'll be focusing on the changes we made to a united robot, just part of building in 2021. We understood the strengths and weaknesses of the robot, is that both won the Singapore Open and Asia Pacific competitions. Overall, there are five main elements that are made. These are the floor bracing, using ball bearings to weigh down the grab and this mechanism. Changing the high friction element on the floor from table rubber pieces to foam tape, changing from an EV3 to a high technique color sensor for the middle, and making the robot feel smaller. The first change we made was to replace our Dago rubber pieces with foam tape. While the rubber pieces would work well when the ball and cube were perfectly centered, in the base of the claw, the grip was unstable when the objects were not in the ideal position or orientation. We figured out that the root cause of this was because the objects had different shapes and using a hard claw would not sit those shapes well. Instead, we should use something that's soft and can grab itself to fit the shape of the object. We experimented with foam tape and found that the grip is more stable as it would conform to the shape of the object increasing the surface area no matter how the object was oriented. With the foam tape, you can now pick up any object reliably, regardless of where it is in a floor. The second change is the color sensor. We changed it to a high technique color sensor, as a range of the Lego sensor was not high enough. It, it would still sense the object even if it's not perfectly aligned. We use a high technique color sensor as a longer range and better color recognition than normal. One of the main problems experienced last year's robots with in the Asia Pacific match on the slide, there are two sections where the line came close to the wall. In those cases, the robot was too wide and hits the wall repeatedly, either reducing the efficiency of the robot when it line tracks or entirely forcing, it, entirely forcing the robot off the line. After realizing the issue, we changed the robot's wing from 22 centimeters to 17 centimeters. We did this by reducing the amount of beams we used on the wheel brace, making just one beam wide. Additionally, we also changed the weights on the clock, which we'll be talking about next. Next, we'll talk about the weights of the clock. At first, the previous weight was too bulky. This led to excess width of the robot, which was a problem, as mentioned in the previous slide. Thus, we slipped from tires to ball bearings. This would tilt the storage channels, allowing the balls to flow down if they were stuck. Moreover, the ball bearings were more compact than wheels. One major issue with the robot last year was that the grab and lift gears was playing a part when the robot was lifting the balls. Despite it being temporarily soft by adding rubber bands, it was not a permanent situation as it increased friction, making it less reliable. We needed a better situation solution. Hence, we crossed braced to the weakest part of the claw ensuring that the gears always remain in contact when the mechanism was right. rotated. This proved to be a lot more reliable. Now I'll be talking about the claw. The claw used for grabbing and lifting the live and lifting victims and the blue cube into the softening mechanism. We use the grab and lift claw as we are doing level 2 blue cube collection. The level 2 blue cube collection deposits only 6 centimeters, so the claw is to lift the ball or blue cube high enough so that it can be deposited. The claw is also used for funneling the items into the middle color sensor. Now I'm going to talk about the downward facing color sensor. They are used on line tracking and green square detection. They are spaced at a distance from each other, so that when the robot is on the green square, the sensors are directly above them. The color sensors are also spaced at a distance from the ground, so that it gives a proper reading. Now I'll be moving on to talk about the ball and cube storage. There are two storage channels attached to the robot, separate the line and the the storage channels are slightly tilted backwards, so that objects can flow to the back when where we deposit them. There are also independent triggers, such as when the robot reverses in the deposit zone, the triggers will be triggered, and the balls and cue the storage channels will fall into the deposit zone. 
This is a sorting mechanism. As you can see, it is a medium label motor mounted vertically so that it can rotate the two prongs and not only sort the object, but it can also push the object further into storage in case it gets stuck in storage. When there's an object detector, the ultras uh, sensor will help track the object as it moves around the obstacle. Next, we'll be talking about the software which we did in Python. Now we will be moving on to the sensor calibration part. Before calibration, both car sensors kept on returning different values, even when they are sensing the same power. Thus, we added code so that the car sensor returns 0% when above black and 100% when above white. For the line tracking, we implemented proportional line tracking. After calculating the error between the left and right and down facing car sensors, the robot will turn the amount of error, so if there's more error, the robot turns more. I will now be moving on to green square detection. Previously, the robot constantly mistakes the black line as a green square, as both values are quite similar. Our solution was to increase the black threshold. We also realized that the green square should all appear at intersection. Thus, when both black and red sensors send double black, the robot reverses and checks for green square. The robot sensors silver tape when the downward facing class sensors return values are greater than calibrated white values. The robot also senses the red line when it senses percentage red, which is the red value divided by the sum of the red, green, and blue band. At first, there was a problem with obstacle avoidance. If we use a level 9 soft power sensor, the robot might not be able to sense the obstacle in time, and when turning, the robot hit the obstacle. Knowing this problem, use a high technique car sensor, decreasing the range of sensing. The sensor will also be able to sense the obstacle and turn in time avoid in the obstacle. To avoid the obstacle, the high technique class sensor first sensor the obstacle from distance. An ultrasound sensor is then mounted outside the robot to measure the distance from the robot and the obstacle. The higher the value of the distance, the more the robot turns towards the obstacle. This will allow the robot to go around the obstacle in a curved motion and will go back to the line after the obstacle avoid. Next, we'll be talking about the evacuation zone. Despite us not having been able to do in the preliminary rounds to the unfinished code, we are still share idea. Our idea was that the robot use spiral searching to find the ball. In spiral searching, the robot will move around in spiral weight by maintaining a certain distance from the wall using ultrasound sensors. This is the same as how we did obstacle avoided. The robot picked balls up as it moves. The robot will check the evacuation points in each corner of the evacuation, evacuation corner. If one is present, the balls will be deposited. If the sensor sensors quite in front of it, it will take the alive victim up and sort it to a sorting channel. If the sensor sensors black, it will pick the dead victim up and sort it into a sorting channel. If the sensor sensors blue, it will pick the rescue kit up and sort it. The way we deposited the balls in the cube is through a trigger mechanism, where when the trigger is pressed, the slide shifts backwards along gravity to let them fall. Thank you. Thank you.